So iPadOS 18 brought a bunch of brand new features, especially some under the hood that we're gonna touch on in a future video. But there's one feature specifically that I wanna get into and that's gonna be in the accessibility settings and it's gonna be eye tracking. So without further ado, let's talk about eye tracking. Let's actually demo it live with you guys and show you exactly what it could do and what it actually means for the future of the iPad and how you actually interact with it moving forward. Let's get into it. So if you live here in the US and you've had the opportunity to buy yourself a Vision Pro or even just go to the Apple store and demo it, the first thing that happens is an eye calibration on the Vision Pro. And that's where the magic is when it comes to the Vision Pro and how you interact with it and how you're actually able to touch icons and do things with your eyes, which again, is part of that magic sauce that comes with Vision OS and the Vision Pro. And it's part of the reason why it's so expensive because it's so kind of bleeding edge on the technology side. So Apple, what they're doing is for both iOS and iPadOS 18, they brought eye tracking over through the accessibility settings. And it's kind of the same thing because it is using the face ID sensors to get you into the eye tracking mode and to help you calibrate the iPad specifically here in this video, but to also calibrate your iPhone on iOS 18. So in order to get this mode going, all you have to do is go into your settings, go into accessibility, go into the eye tracking portion, and then turn it on. The first time you turn it on, it's gonna walk you through this calibration process where you're looking at little circles on the actual iPad screen itself, and it's gonna make you follow them with your eyes. So that way, that is how it's actually calibrating based on your eyes and your movement and what you're looking at. So it's gonna ask you to look at the top left corner, the middle, the top middle, top right, bottom right, bottom middle, and walk you through the setup process to make sure it's calibrated as best as possible. Now again, we're on iPadOS 18 beta one, so it's not gonna be perfect. If anything, it's still pretty wonky, but it will give you an idea of what it looks like. So now that we're fully calibrated, let's go to the iPad, walk through the rest of the settings, and then see exactly how this thing actually works and see if it's worth it and see what it means moving forward. So I'm gonna do my best here to kind of illustrate what's going on. And right now it's kind of going crazy because my eyeballs are going crazy. But once you're done with the setup process, this is what it looks like. It's almost like a giant sized version of the mouse cursor that's running around. And then when you actually go on something that's clickable, it'll try to snap to that. Now you can actually change up a couple of the settings. For instance, you can change up the smoothing here, which allows it to go a little bit slower, which I kind of like to keep it a little bit higher. That way you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. But again, as of right now, it's not working too well. Like right now, I am looking at something over like at the camera on the left-hand side. So it's picking up that I'm kind of looking over there, but not really, and it's not really letting me click on it. So as of right now, I wouldn't even consider this really usable. And then also, if you actually are using this as an accessibility setting where you are not able to actually interact with the iPad, you're gonna have to interact with this over here with your actual eyesight and your eye tracking. So here you can see it dwells, and then I can see I clicked on there. And then if I go to the camera, if I See, I can't even get over to it. Maybe if I look up a little bit. So see, it doesn't even pick it up. So I would have to go back in here. And the only dwell that's working right now is if I go into my notification center maybe. It lets me go to device and lock rotation. As you can see, the dwell is kind of working there. But overall, it's just not super usable, unfortunately. But you can see this being very cool. Like I have my home screen here. I'm kind of looking at Affinity Photo. And as you can see, as I'm looking at Affinity Photo, it's trying to go down to YouTube Studio. So I do think you're gonna have to calibrate this a few times. And then if I rotate it, will it calibrate again? As you can see, every time you rotate it, it wants you to recalibrate itself a little bit to actually see what's going on. So if I recalibrate it, I'm not gonna walk through that whole process, but it is recalibrating me right now. So as you can see, this eye tracking situation and feature still has a ways to go. It's still not perfect. Again, we're in beta one, and it's a little bit difficult, I guess, for the eye tracking to really take place to see exactly what's going on with just a single camera and whatever face ID sensors they have in there. When it comes to the Vision Pro, there's a bunch of different sensors, a bunch of in-facing cameras that are constantly tracking your eyeballs and every single movement that come along with it. That's why on the Vision Pro, it's like 95% precise whenever you're looking at something and you wanna actually click it. And then also what I like about the Vision Pro is how you actually physically interact with it. You actually use your fingers to actually click on things on the screen or whatever you're looking at versus on the iPad and the iPhone. You're using this dwell situation, which basically means that in order to click on an option or click on a button or click on an application, you have to look at that actual application for a certain amount of time and dwell on it. And then it'll open up that application or open up that feature or whatever the case may be. So. There's still a ways to go. I do think that Apple should bring over the feature of tapping your fingers in order to actually click on something, but I think that has to do with sensors outside of the actual Vision Pro, and it probably doesn't make sense to be able to do it on the iPad itself. But long story short, I do think this is a great step forward for accessibility for people that maybe aren't able to use the iPad how it was intended to be used as a touch-first interface. It kind of just opens the door for the possibilities, not only from a non-accessibility standpoint, but especially from an accessibility standpoint. It really shows the kind of computer prowess behind the iPad Pro. 
love or hate iPad OS 18 with the features and what it has and people thinking it's an overpowered device for the software that it has, but there's some awesome stuff going on underneath the hood. And this eye tracking feature really kind of shows off exactly what can be done with the iPad. But leave a comment down below of what you think. Is this something that you would use if they do kind of perfect it moving forward? Like I said, it's still a little bit wonky. It's not very good at actually tracking your eyes and looking at what you need to, especially on the iPad. I've noticed that on iOS, it's a little bit more precise, maybe because it's a smaller screen and it's, there's less kind of variability going on versus on the larger iPad Pro, there's a lot more room for error because of how big the screen is. But that's just my kind of quick guess without actually knowing exactly what's going on. But let me know with a comment. Is this something you're gonna use? Is this something you wanna be able to use when it does get perfected? Or is this kind of another accessibility feature that will kind of stay buried in the settings for you and you won't touch? But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And definitely stay subscribed or get subscribed because I have a great video talking about some hidden iPad OS 18 features that went under the radar that Apple didn't even talk about at all that I think you guys should definitely know about. But that's going to do it for this video. If you guys want to watch more videos like this, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.